Hello and welcome back to Star Citizen. My name is Even Lease, and today on, yeah, that's right, 20 minutes more or less ship review, right behind me, the Aegis Redeemer, a gunship. Let's go ahead, take a look. Welcome back, everybody, to another review. Today, the Aegis Redeemer. Now, taking a look at this ship, you know, the stats are hit and miss, honestly. 3.23, I feel like, has kind of crippled this ship pretty badly, and that's really too bad. It is a gunship, and it does have a massive amount of firepower on it. A lot of this firepower now is going to be, you know, only useful if you have all these guns outfitted with people. Um, as we don't have AI crews yet, and, you know, there's no way to control these remote turrets remotely at this point in time, uh, you know, with, like, AI blades or anything like that. So it just turns into, if you're flying this ship solo, you're going to have a lot more of an issue staying on target. Uh, and, you know, your speed's just not there anymore. And you just can't do too much uh, just as a solo player with this ship. And one of the biggest reasons is because this maneuverability is just awful. I mean, this ship moves just about as bad as an Anvil Carrick, and the Anvil Carrick is three or four times the size, and is also almost, it's not as slow as the Anvil Carrick, but it's almost as slow as the Anvil Carrick. So let's go over this ship and kind of talk about its stats and see where, you know, maybe they could potentially change things in the future. Now, obviously... When it comes down to stats on these ships, these ships are all changing every day. You know, balance passes and everything throughout beta and alpha and final game and all that. And even probably after, uh, these ships will probably uh, get a lot of number changes here and there. So this is just for 3.23 and potentially 3.24. Obviously, some of the damage outputs on some of these guns might change a little bit on 3.24. And some of the flight characteristics. You know, if there's any big dramatic changes to this ship or other ships uh, with 3.24 and other updates, I'll definitely take a look at it again and do another review. Getting into this one, this ship is $330 if you were to buy it on the Pledge Store when it is available. And um, if you were to buy it in-game, it is $17,199,000 AUEC. Definitely not a low price for the size ship that this is, but it's priced based off the fact that it's a massive gun ship. And if you look around, it's got a ton of guns on it. Again, only really useful if you have them outfitted with a bunch of people. And uh, so let's get into that. You have a total stock DPS of 542, and that's only taking into account the two size four uh, C7A8 ballistic cannons, one on each wing. Now, the pilot does have control of the front remote turret when that turret's not um, occupied. You know, nobody's in the seat. So that's another two size um, three M5A laser cannons. So if you add those on, you're sitting about 2,000 DPS roughly stock as the pilot. And that's not terrible at all. That's actually really good. But, you know, you, got, you can't have that seat occupied. Uh, if you're going to want to control that by the pilot, right? And then also, this ship's maneuverability is just completely trash. Like, it moves very slow. Uh, keeping on target is going to be nearly impossible with a lot of ships that are faster than you and can kind of circle around you. So any light, medium, or even heavy fighters could absolutely, you know, outpace this thing. So you might want to have these guns, uh, you know, <laughs> occupied as best as you can. Speaking of those guns, you do have two man turrets, obviously one here on the bottom and one on the top of the ship. Now they're both uh, have two size 585B ballistic Gatling guns. So that's pretty cool. These things output pretty good amount of damage and now they have a pretty you know decent amount of ammo, not the greatest, uh, but you know the damage is there and they're, they're massive guns. You could obviously swap those out for something else if you wanted to, but honestly, ballistics penetrate shields a lot easier, so that's not a bad outfit at all. Uh, moving past that, you do have one more selection of guns, and that's on the back. It's another remote turret, so that's uh, two more size 3 M5A laser cannons right here on the rear of the ship. Pretty cool. I like to see that. You know, more guns, the better, but it just means that you have to have 
quite the human crew to take full potential of this ship, which is not always the case when you're jumping into Star Citizen. I mean, a lot of people want to play their own ships, and uh, so you got to kind of turn it into an org thing, or, you know, sometimes maybe you have buddies that get tired of flying their own stuff, right? So pretty fun, um, pretty good amount of firepower. You also have 16 size 2 Strike Force 2 missiles, which is a, a decent amount of missiles. You know, they're only size 2, so they're more or less just throwing them out there if you, you know, can't keep up with your target speed-wise. Because <laughs> you probably won't be able to. Now, um, talking about the defensive capability of this ship, before we hop onto the interior, this ship has 200,000 quadrant shield, which is quite a bit of shield, honestly, and 102,300 ship HP. So... You know, it's really surprising that this ship is only 700 HP lower than the Carrick. I feel like, and I'm comparing this to the Carrick a lot. I, they're totally two different separate style ships, right? But you would think a ship that's three or four times the size of this thing would have a lot more health points, or this would maybe have just a lot less, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, but this ship definitely has quite a bit, and it could take a real big hit before going down, which is good because it is a gunship and it's not meant to be fragile. Um, but there's just a lot of inconsistencies with these numbers. So hopefully they'll straighten them out over the next few patches. Hopefully, you know, 2.4 or 4.0 or even past that. It'll be interesting to see where this ship kind of finds its role. Um, and then, you know, let's talk about a little bit of the exterior. Obviously, you have a very, I think it's probably one of the best looking designs out there when it comes to like a gunship or a heavy, you know, fighter style ship. This is just pretty sick looking. Um, I really do like it. It sucks that you have to have so much human crew at this point in time. So when NPC cruise becomes a thing, this will just be such a sick ship to fly around. Uh, but on the outside here, you do have escape pods one and two on this side and on the other side, three and four. These are actually your beds right here. Um, so this is where the beds are placed in the ship. And that probably makes sense to some of the interior layout, which in a way doesn't make sense. <laughs> so let's get in the interior and talk about that. This ship has two SCU of cargo. So if you were to walk through your primary door here, you know, a ramp, we all love that, which could potentially carry like a hover bike if you were to place it in here correctly. Um, but, you know, interesting. I, I feel like it's going to be great when the Ranger comes into play, have a nice motorcycle you can park up here and shut the door. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I'll shut this door just so when we hop into the pilot seat, don't have to worry about it later. So let's talk about this interior. Here's where the two SCU of cargo goes. Uh, and so, you know, you carry a little bit of cargo. So when you're out in long distance trips, you know, being a frontline ship or an escort ship or just exploring unknown areas uh, with a lot of firepower this will hold a lot of supplies which is good and then here is a wardrobe and a storage unit right below so if you click that button it will open your storage and then right above is this wardrobe where you would typically carry like your armor or your clothes now it's got some graphical bugs like the button for it and then if you were to press it the number comes out with it so a little bit of graphical bugs with this ship and that's with every one of the wardrobes they all do that and then this wardrobe here actually has a surprise so if you have a crew member with you just make sure they're standing over there by the food and then you just open this door and whack they just get nailed right and they get pushed into the wall over there that's just funny um <laughs> so quite a few wardrobes and then here's those beds like i was telling you so these are escape pods so you know if you start turning into a big ball of fire and you need to get out of here obviously you need to get off the second level go down this nice fun ladder that you're gonna bang your head on an urgency get in bed you know nothing better uh get cuddled up under the blankets and hit that eject button so you'll plop right out of the bottom of the ship and hopefully survive whatever comes <laughs> next now it's going to be interesting to see that functionality actually come into play as of right now it is not in play so don't you know try to use that you can't do it yet um, but you know, can't forget the famous old bathroom. So let's go ahead and check that out really quick. Right here, you have a nice little restroom with a shower, a mirror, you know, a nice faucet, wash your hands, a little med pack and a toilet, of course, which I'm not going to go ahead and sit on. I do not want to end up having to restart my game or something. <laughs> I know that's probably not the case nowadays, but you know, just some trauma, some trauma from uh, previous experiences, a little bit of a kitchenette here, um, with all your crap flowing around. And a lot of this stuff is actually, you know, usable right now. You could drink some of these drinks and stuff which is kind of nice um but none of this is like mag or anything like there's no magnets so it's not holding any of your crap down <laughs> so when you're storing stuff in here just expect it to be all over the place 
you know, little coffee makers, drinks, all sorts of fun stuff. So nice little kitchen area. Now, what I was talking about when it came to the interior scuffle with this ship, honestly, is the bed location itself. I felt like this bed location should have been upstairs, and I'll show you where. But now that you kind of see where the escape pods kind of come out of, it makes a little bit of sense. Maybe they could make the escape pods pop out of the top of the ship, too. I mean, either way. So let's head upstairs. Right here, you have four jump seats. This is where I kind of feel like the beds would have had a better place because these jump seats, I know they're called jump seats, but they don't really make sense for the crew because you do have a four crew. This is a four crew ship, right? So you have, you know, four, uh, one pilot, three gunners, um, which is kind of surprising because, you know, two man turrets, two remote turrets. But I guess you just leave that one remote turret ungunned up the top or you're just swapping beds. So, you know, four man crew or a five man crew with four beds, whatever. Now, um, the, the whole point, though, is if you are in a gunner seat um, or, you know, a turret or whatnot, you don't need to be in a jump seat. You're already, you know, seat belted in to your seat here and you're good to go you know stay in a defensive posture allowing you to protect yourself don't have to run from here to get into a jump seat to actually jump that just wouldn't make too much sense to me so those jump seat locations and and this is my opinion of course um it feels more like you you have a special forces team you bring them in here you put them in these seats you jump out and you have a nice you know invasion on a bunker or something with your ship being fully occupied and for special forces members here or something like that in these seats or even you're just running you know weird civilian transport these seats would be good for that use i you know wouldn't mind seeing them on the bottom level where the beds currently are and having the beds up here that'd be kind of nice because then you can just get in bed and you know get up and go to work when you need to um, you do have some life support systems and other things you can't occupy, you know, not occupy, but you can't access yet, like a gravity generator here, life support there. You do have a nice weapons rack here, so you can definitely store quite a few weapons um, or four weapons, it looks like. And that's kind of nice. Now, moving back here, this is where all your components are. So some of it is accessible. Some of it isn't. A lot of these have a lot of graphical bugs, so you can't even find the buttons like it would normally be here, but it's not. Like this one here is hovering here, and uh, this one over here is over here. And surprisingly, this ship has a lot of graphical issues i mean it's not game breaking but it's just kind of annoying <laughs> it's a very expensive ship and uh this quantum drive if you look at the back of the ship there's actually an area that says component access and i think like that's a back door to where you could actually open it up and you know install these style items into your ship from up here which is pretty cool i don't know if that's truly ca the case maybe there's just more components back there in a very hard to reach spot um but it's still cool to see it's still very cool to see now, this is also where you'd access your upper turret. So you just get in by, you know, hitting the button here, hop on in and have a lot of good <laughs> 85B firepower. Moving back up to the front of the ship, you do have your lower turret access here right at the front. So if you look at that little, you know, console right there, you can go ahead and hop into your lower turret. Pretty good. Pretty nice access. And then you have some engineering consoles here, obviously, that just have no functionality yet. Um, but it's pretty cool. I feel like these are shield things i don't know what these really truly are but it looks almost like a power generator or a shield generator it's probably like your power systems that's what i think it is these probably help uh operate your you know hair flattening style engines on the outside of the ship and uh yeah so i mean it's not a terrible design the interior is pretty nice and i really do love the style of this ship it's very uh, military aesthetic right which it should be it's a gunship and it just looks really good now these are your remote turrets as they're labeled on the bottom so remote turret two and one so pretty nice to see that again of course if you occupy the front one the pilot no longer has control over that you have a little bit more uh, you know components like your avionics right here and then a nice fire extinguisher for when fires come to ruin our day <laughs> again a one entry ship so if a fire starts in this vessel you have to figure out your way through it um or more or less just vent the atmosphere which this ship doesn't really allow you to do that too well without suffocating a lot of your crew you would think some of these areas would have doors um but i just don't see any like this you would think would be able to close and be a door or this right here would be able to close and be a door. It's just too bad that, you know, as of right now, it doesn't look like it does. Um, but still, pretty neat. I like to see that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop into the pilot seat really quick. And let's talk about the final stats here. Now, this ship does have, like I said, a very slow speed to it. It's sitting at 160 SCM. Um, it's a very, very low speed. So that is something to think about when you're flying this ship. 
160 SCM, 320 forward boost, and a 170 backwards boost. So she's very slow. The Carrick is 20 SCM slower. Again, these stats are all going to change. These are not a permanent stat, right? Um, so my comparison right now is just, you know, in the fact of 3.23. And this ship got hit pretty hard with that. And like I said, the maneuverability on the ship is not great either. So turning takes forever. And, you know, staying on target is definitely not something uh, as easily done. Now you have a 960 nav speed. So again, you're very slow. For a gunship, you're not really chasing anything down. You are more or less just like sitting right next to a caterpillar that you're protecting and you just sit there and kind of follow it slowly and you know guard it as best you can and not really you know chase or do anything else so that is something to understand with this ship now it does have 5700 quantum fuel so definitely a good amount of quantum fuel to where you're not going to have to go back and uh you know refuel too often if you keep these ballistic guns on here though you're probably going to have to rearm a lot more than you think so refueling is just going to come naturally when you're rearming your ship Outside of that, I mean, this ship is, it's pretty great. It's got a great design to it. It looks good. It's got, you know, really great firepower if you have all the seats occupied. And um, it's just overall a very, very beautiful ship. A very, you know, I it's, it's got a small place in my heart. I feel like it could be better. And uh, so we'll see what happens to it in the future. Now, based off all, all the stats that I've kind of reviewed in my personal experiences with this ship, honestly, an 8 out of 10 is where I'm sitting just due to the fact that it does have pilot-controlled weapons. It hits really hard when it is crewed. It has amazing shields, a great health pool amount, a really decent quantum fuel tank, but it's just very slow and maneuvers terribly. So outside of that, there's just a little bit of work that needs to be done. Man, I can't wait to see competitors to ships like this, especially if, like, something alien. <laughs> That's going to be fantastic. Let me know what you th uh, you guys think of the Redeemer down below in the comments. You know, have you flown it in 3.23? What do you think of it? Uh, is it something you like flying in 3.23? Or you kind of has it kind of hit the shelf for right now until future balance passes on this ship? Let me know and comment down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.